So now what we have are the dating and relationship reps. And so we're going to get advice on dating, love, and relationships from the experts. So down here we have Thomas Edwards Jr., better known as your wingman. Again, if you're on Twitter, he's right there at your wingman. And then here we have um, Debbie Burke, who is the sexy true love coach, yeah. right? Amazing. We have a coach here. And then we have, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking through. <laughs> As fast as I can, Sarah Lee Bunting, who is uh, was on the dating advice columnist for Time Out New York, top love column. So you got to listen to what you got to say. <laughs> and then we have our amazing um, Suzanne over here. So let's go ahead and get things going. Thank you. Uh, give me another hand, please. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good, got yeah. coffee, feeling good, awake. So I'm personally excited just because, you know, it's very rare that I get a chance to talk to amazing, beautiful, sexy women in one room. Like I'm completely overwhelmed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm flustered. But I'm also challenged because I usually don't start my day, it's like 11 a.m. So I'm not a morning person, so bear with me. We'll get the energy there. So I need you guys to help me out. So just a little bit about myself. Um, founded a company a couple years ago called The Professional Wingman. And we help people develop their social skills to so have better dating lives. And how we do it is by giving them dating strategy and working, working on their lifestyle. And I certainly believe that your lifestyle is going to dictate the kind of dating life you have. So if you go to work, go home, play with your cat and watch DVR, you know, all night, chances are you're not dating. So my job is to help you basically get inspired, motivated, and have a plan, which is something that you don't really think about when it comes to dating. I mean, you have a plan for everything else in life, right? But when it comes to dating, you just figure, well, it's just going to work out. I'm going to you know, fall and run into someone, and he's going to be the blow of my life, and that's it. But that's not the case today, especially in the digital age, where there's infinite choice. And it's a lot of things that distracts us. And so it's very important to have a specific plan and know how to, I guess, market yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so with that said, you know, I've had a couple of points, but we'll bring it up in terms of the conversation. So I would love, actually, just to shut up, start off with one question that I had, which was, <laughs> I think it's better to start off this one. Would be to, basically, what would be the number one thing you would actually say to someone in terms of how to better your dating lives? I would, me personally, I would say that you have to really be proactive and really get out there. And it's just repeating what I said earlier this morning, but it's really being proactive and treating it like, I don't mean to sound so, you know, scientific, but really it's about like how you try to find a job. You need to do that and try to find the right guy for you. It's going to take work, but you have to do it. Because theoretically, again, a man is supposed to last longer than your job. So you should treat it like, you know, spending the time and doing it. Oh, are we all addressing this? <laughs> um, I would say before anything else, um, forgive yourself or give yourself a break. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, you want what you want. You want the things you want. You want the kind of man you want. You want the kind of life you want. And I think there's a lot of pressure to maybe want things you don't, or not want things that you do, or um, just to sort of be a certain person or feel certain things. Um, and you know, you're supposed to not care, or you're supposed to not sort of let anyone know that you care, that you want someone in your life, that you know it's fine, and I'm, you know, Amazon warrior, rawr, like, <laughs> that's great. I'm, you know, a retired Amazon warrior myself. It's, it's, a, it's a good gig if you can get it, but I think before you sort of go into dating and go into relationships, I think you have to give yourself a break for everything that you want and that you're looking for, and not judge yourself not have a bunch of ideas in your head about things that you're doing wrong or things that you're feeling that are wrong. Just kind of set that aside and then you can sort of do the work of, of finding me and having fun. But up top, stop judging yourselves. That would be my that would be my main advice. For that life. Mean, yeah, for life. Yeah. Uh, but specific to this, definitely. 
I mean, you know, one thing I've really noticed is that we have a tendency to confabulate. Are you guys familiar with the term confabulation? So basically, confabulation is when we see something at, you know, at face value, we actually determine in our mind what it means. And it may not actually be true, but we just convince ourselves that it is. You know, so it's a very like kind of higher level thinking, so to speak. But when you're in a relationship and when you're dating and you get a text and it's like hot, and you freak out, like, what does that mean? Like, you, you can evaluate and create this theory that's gonna make you feel comfortable and, and with yourself. And then every time you do that, you're creating this, this world that may not necessarily exist. And so if he doesn't say hi, he goes, what's up? He's like, well, why do you say hi? Why do you say hi? You know, why do you say hi? So you know, the best thing to do is, and it's, it's very difficult, so I totally understand you know, it's something that you're gonna have a hard time doing, but it takes time, like Suzanne said. Try to see things as face value before you actually come up to any type of conclusion. <laughs> it's always better to judge a man based on his actions more so than his words. And so my advice when I always work with women, I work with some men, but mostly women, is to know your worth. A lot of a lot of women they single for a while, and I I've, I've been by my men since forty one, so I've been out there, girls. I know how it is. And you see, with, with the longer you're single, the more you want relationship. It's almost like you're getting that desperation, like you feel like you need to earn their love, or you put men on a pedestal, like they have something that you need, like you want a relationship. So it's like the man has all the power. And so they put these men on pedestals, and then they, like you say, he says, hi, oh, what do I do? Uh, or why didn't he call? It's like, I have four letter words for men that don't call. Next. <laughs> like you have, and if you hold that in your, who you are, and you just know that you are, imagine going to every day and you have a million dollars in your purse. And you're like, the lucky man that gets me gets his million dollars. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you will have men chasing you to know tomorrow if you have that attitude. It really doesn't matter what you say or what you do, that first belief that you believe in yourself, that's all that matters. You can do all the you know, flirting and touching your hair and all that stuff, but you can, if you don't feel good about yourself, it's not gonna work. It's gonna work temporarily, and then you're gonna get the guy who likes you, and then he doesn't call again, so. Believe in yourself. You guys are all awesome. Absolutely. I wanna just add on to that point, um, is, you know, I hear a lot, as a matchmaker, that, um, you know, someone will say to me, well, yeah, she's so beautiful. My male clients will say to me, she's so beautiful. She's trying to decide if she wants to date me exclusively. And, you know, they're trying to win her over. And, it, you know, I just date coached a, a male client this week. And I said, why are you waiting for her to decide? You should decide if she's right for you. I mean, I know she's beautiful, but get past her beauty and look at all her inner qualities. Is she the right person for you? And that should apply for you too, though. When I, don't wait for the guy to decide if you're right for him. Think about, is this guy right for me? Does he have all the qualities that I want? So stop letting him take control of your life. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is that, uh, you know, I, like I said before, you know, we're in a different time, and it's important for women to be proactive, you know, and, and be smart about being proactive in terms of dating. I mean, I personally believe in traditional courtship, so I always believe that, you know, the guy needs to make the first move. But at the same time, you can't just sit there and wait for him to make the move. You've got to give him signals, things that are obvious, you know, and <laughs> the thing's very, very funny. Like, I, when I coach women, uh, I have this concept of being flirt-hearted, which is basically it's an inability to let a guy know that you're interested. And sometimes I'll watch a woman, you know, through her body language, basically give these messages saying that a guy, is, you know, she's interested in a guy. And a guy is completely clueless. So what you think is like, totally obvious, he may not see it all. So it's better always to be more proactive in letting guys know that I mean, you're interested. And it may not necessarily be by saying it outright, it just more with you know, how you carry yourself and how you act around them. Um, that being said, uh, one thing I want to ask to talk about that I think would be really interesting is talk about uh, mistakes that we all make when it comes to different parts of the dating process. And so, I have a few pieces down here in terms of like presentation, you know, and the ability to be approachable. You know, what are some things you notice that women do wrong, and how can they correct us? Oh, I have a good one. Um, <laughs> and it's it, men are very visual, right, Thomas? Absolutely. And so when men come into a bar or wherever they go, 
the first thing they do is they scan the room to see if they find someone attractive. And I will tell you that the one thing that I see, and you see, I see it right here right now, everybody's wearing too much black. You need to wear color. And I will tell you that red, there was actually a scientific study that was done that red attracts. And I've had women test this out. I had women go out wearing, I had one woman go out wearing a red dress. She got six phone numbers in one night and she called me the next day and said, Suzanne, I've never had that happen. <laughs> and another girl was wearing a red top and she went out and she said the same thing. She definitely got more attention. In New York, we tend to wear too much black and you need to wear color and you need to stick out. And you just scan this room. I mean, I'm wearing black and I'm wearing color too. So you need to add more color into your wardrobe. And I know it's hard in the winter, but you have to. Yeah, I mean, to actually piggyback that, I mean, if you do wear color, you're actually going to stand out more because everyone else is going to be wearing black. <laughs> and, I can, and I can actually attest to this, this red theory because, uh, you know, with my friends, we have this little joke that when I pull out the red shirt, it's going to be a good night. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I personally, I've never had a wearing a red shirt. I have no idea. So, absolutely, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say don't be be proactive and not reactive. I mean, definitely sort of be able to read the room and get a sense of like who you're talking to. Like on a first date, for example, don't try not to freeze up. Like deep breaths, like try to relax yourself physically and try not to get too ahead of yourself in your mind about like trying to like trying to read him and then be what you think he wants. Like, maybe you're not what he wants, that's okay. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you, it just means it's a bad fit next, like you said. Um, but I would say, you know, be yourself is such big and ridiculous advice and no one hears it, so I would fine tune it a little to just, you know, just be. Um, and don't, don't sort of be like this, like in the goal, like trying to figure out the like just, you know, stand there. Um, and it's it's very difficult, I understand, it's much easier to say these things and tell you guys these things than it's to actually do. And it's not like I'm batting a thousand on all of it either. But there is that, there is definitely this feeling of like being out of control and like at the mercy of your dates that's like, then the dates don't work out, and you also feel kind of like you're being buffeted. Like just try to, you know, try to remember that you're there too. What you want is important too, and don't just react. You know, act and talk and be yourself. I mean, I know you're not gonna hear that last part. Um, I have one that's really interesting, and I never thought of it before because I was, even if I was, I had so many heartaches, even in one of my stories, I could write novels and all that. I had problems with. But, um, I, and so I always had quite an easy attracting men, and I always just had a good time. I just always attracted, you know, the womanizer guy. But uh, when I met my man, who's amazing, um, he told me, he said, you are the first woman I went out with that isn't bitter. And he said, that's what, I, you were so different than everyone. Everyone was so bitter. So I would say that do the forgiveness work that you have to with your exes. <laughs> Do a little detox with them, of your parents, and, and come to every date as fresh, and don't prejudge a man because he's a man and he's gonna be like the others, and be so defensive and so closed up that he can't even feel your heart. A lot of women, I, I feel them, like I, I can feel energy, and um, I'll talk to some women and they'll say, you know, I'm not getting any connection with these guys, and I said, we have this like box around your heart. And it's like it hard edges. And men can feel that we communicate to each other all the time subconsciously. So just this guy could be the best thing ever happened to you. And you could be the best thing ever happened to him. So be, just be open and don't uh, let the past keep repeating itself. Don't keep bringing it up with you. And smile. <laughs> and be hopeful. Because he's out there. There's a man out there for you. Or a woman. If you're a guy. <laughs> smile. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so simple, right? I mean, it's, you have no idea how much you can make someone's day if you smile. You all have amazing smiles. Like, let's just be real about this. You know, share it. You know, it's one of the best things you can give. It's so easy, it costs you nothing. Nothing. You know, and you can give, it has so much value to the person who's actually receiving that smile. 
I mean, one thing I see when I'm out at the bars, I'm working with clients, or I'm out at events, and women who are together and they want to meet guys, but they have this such a mean look on their face. <laughs> <laughs> you just wonder, you know, like how is a guy going to be able to approach someone? Like, you know, as you know, as beautiful as you are, I mean, for a guy to see that, it's very intimidating, and he hasn't said anything to you yet. So the likelihood of him wanting to approach you is just very, very, very slim. And so smile, make eye contact. You know, I know New York, and you know we have a lot of crazies, and you know, we may not be as you know open to meeting people, but just be aware of what's going on around you. When you see an opportunity, you know, just make eye contact and smile. You know, if a guy can see that you're warm to his approach, he'd be more likely to say something to you. And it can happen anywhere, you know? Uh, one test that I have, uh, I always have my clients do for a week is to actually, whenever they're in transit, whether they're you know, walking down the street, they're on the bus, or you know, on the subway, it's completely disconnect. And what I mean by that is, no iPod, no iPhone, no Blackberry, no book, nothing. And just completely observe what's going on around you. See the people who are there and the opportunities that may exist for someone to say something to you. You know, because the guy's not going to talk to you if you're, you know, you listen to music, or you know, if you're reading a book, or if you're on your BlackBerry. You know, see what happens. You know, it may not, nothing may happen. You know, but at the same time, you might just feel good that you're opening yourself up more, like you said, to just someone who wanted to say hi to you. Can I have one more thing? Um, mm -hmm. I had a guy friend once tell me, uh, he went out with a friend of mine, and I said, well, why didn't, she's a gorgeous girl, and I said, why didn't you ask her out again? And he said, she was really rude to the waiter, or the waitress. And so you just have to, he's like, you know, she was kind of edgy with the waitress, and you just, they watch everything. And they're like, if she's like that, how is she going to be around my family? And, you know, so he was really looking for someone, and he was like, I don't want to deal with someone with an attitude, so. Leave the attitude at the door, you know, save it for when yeah, he does something wrong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but give him a break. <laughs> you know, I had uh, a couple more points I wanted to make, but actually, I, I would love for you guys to, to ask questions. I mean, I'll, I'll let you know, I mean, like the last the other two topics that I want to talk about was actually body language, and so just like you know, flirting, eye contact, things like that, um, showing interest without feeling like you're putting yourself out there too much. And the other topic was also like dates. You know, how to, how to handle, facilitate dates, how to follow up uh, as a woman, which is, you know, can be different than guys. And then, like, the whole calling versus texting. Um, so, I, instead of just, like, talking about it, I mean, I think if you, if you guys have questions, you should ask. Updates, a comment in something you said earlier about, like, if he texts and says hi, it means hi. Best advice I ever got was from a gay guy at work. I was trying to overanalyze, decipher, go through this whole thing about a phone call that a guy had left for me. And he goes, honey, men don't speak in riddles. If we say we don't like meatloaf, we don't like meatloaf. It doesn't matter whose recipe you make. We just don't like it. He's like, stop trying to figure us out. We don't speak in riddles. And I think that's how we waste a lot of our time is killing ourselves, analyzing a lot of what they say or do instead of just seeing it for face value. So when you said that earlier, you're already doing that. Yeah, guys are very logical. Like they will think with logic first before they think with emotion. So that's why it's so much more important to always see things as face value first before you actually try to think deeper into it. If the guy wants to go deeper, he will let you know that he wants to. And I know it's tough because you know women much more emotional uh, charge than logical logical. It just it makes you guys great. You know, just keep that in mind. I have a question. I guess this goes along the lines of I think Dr. Diane. I think that's something you said. As far as you know, being outgoing, being welcoming. I, mean, I feel that that's the case. But sometimes I feel that the, the guys you attract are not guys that are the most. How can I say this? That you want to be in a relationship with. I mean, I know there's deal breakers, there are attributes you open yourself up, but there are some guys you just don't want to be bothered with, and you just don't see yourself in a relationship with. I guess my issue is finding people that are people who want to be in a relationship and that are worthy of you being in a relationship with them. That's my issue. Well, you have to come to my talk this afternoon because I'll tell you exactly why you keep attracting women. And I can tell you how you can change it like that. Because it's not about where you go. You can change it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of time. Yeah. Part of that definitely has to do with presentation. And part of is how you carry yourself, you know, how you walk, you know, how you look, how you talk. I mean, those kind of things do, you know, hold weight in terms of the guys that you actually attract, that you attract. 
So just things to think about. I mean, they may seem very, very little, but as a whole, dynamically change, you know, the kind well, of Well, give an example. For example, OK, so um, let's try the image. So today's Saturday. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you're looking for a guy who, you know, is worthy of you and may also want to be in a relationship, chances are you may not find him at 1 a.m. Right? Can we, can we all agree with that? <laughs> you know? But, however, there are women who go out there and they hope that they're going to find that person at 1 a.m. You know? And when they're there, you know, they, you know, they look amazing. But they also have a mean mug on their face because they're trying to shy away the guys and they don't want to approach. But the guys who are ballsy, the guys who are arrogant, those are the guys that are going to talk to you. You know, a guy who might be a, might be in a corner or maybe a little hesitant to approach you will never ever approach you, especially if you you know if you're positioned like that. And so that's like that'd be like a perfect example of you know the kind of tweaks that you need to make. Maybe instead of going at one a.m., maybe you should try seven to eight p.m. You know, those kind of things. So just making those little tweaks in terms of how you attack your night away. That's a great choice. I always tell my clients that um, the guy that's the dorkiest, that doesn't have to talk to you and is not smooth, is the guy that's going to stay with you because you know he's not trolling everywhere. <laughs> 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 and, and I'm going to go super smooth all the time. He's going to go, you know, hang with you. He's always said, tell me other girls. He was saying the same thing too. So it's like what you're attracted to. Yeah, you, you know, can't help it. I mean, you want someone who's falls in They're so and, and kind of like uncomfortable, but there's so there's something so cute about them. Yeah. And so stay away from that. So stay away from, from the guy in the red shirt. Guy in his lucky shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a running joke throughout the day. <laughs> uh, in the bank. Um. You said you need to sort of be open all the time and like not read and have your iPod and all that sort of stuff. One of the things that I found is if I'm reading something really eclectic, people will talk to me simply because they're all on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I was reading Moneyball, and yeah, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's not necessarily a woman's book, but guys have read it. Yeah. So how can you say so with such certitude? You know that those are that those are, are turnoffs, or I think they can also be attractors. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously there there, there can be exceptions, and I hate to use the word exception, just please. Mm -hmm. Once once we think there's an exception, that means there's a possibility of us being able to use it. But let's not let's not worry about that. Something like that is actually just a unique example of being able to attract people. I mean, it's more likely you're going to be able to attract someone you having a book like that than having like an iPhone or an iPad uh, when you're reading the same book, right? Or mm -hmm. so, Yeah, or Kindle. So, you know, think about those things. You know, I mean, if you like reading books and maybe you're reading something in the collective, that could be something that's, that can serve to your advantage. And I met a guy on an airplane, I was reading The Road Less Traveled, and he was hot, hot, hot. And he was like, what are you reading? And by the end of the plane, and he was much too young for me, but he was going to quit his job, and he was going to start this new <laughs> Mm -hmm. So is it reasonable to have that as a deal breaker? And what do you do if somebody says, 
I don't want you to have any male friends. I will stop having any have any friends more women. That's can I? Can I? For me, what? I just wanted to comment on this one because for me, that's not even a deal breaker. That's like a excuse me. Right? <laughs> because for some, that, that's more of a controlling behavior. And so to me, the way I've been established and the way I advise anyone, whether you're male, female, is at that point that that's a control issue. And it's not so much, you know, oh he's not he's not working at this type of job or he's not driving this kind of car. And so I would say right there, that is a red flag. And I think that your intuition was right spot on. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I think that we, we need to be aware of like what a deal breaker versus caveman behavior. versus the foundation is crumbling. Yeah. And I think that there are certain cosmetic deal breakers. Like, ideally, yes, I would like a guy that's taller than me. I'm 5'10", you know, you, you sort of have to open up a little bit with that. Like, let, let's get close. Like, maybe no job fees. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, like, I'd like to wear videos, exactly. Like, you know, but yeah, if, he's, if he's a jockey, he has a job, that's a good thing. But like, things like that were all being controlling. Part of that is just being secure as a man to accept that. 
yeah, whether, yeah. whether, whether, whether we like it or not. It's a woman to be like, just because you don't like this one way that my life is, doesn't mean that I have to change where you're going to be. Yeah. You know, like you have to sort of know when to stay in your ground and be like, I acknowledge that you have this feeling. You don't get to do anything about it. Let's, you know, let's talk about it. Like, feel your feelings and I'll be over here. You know, that's, that's okay. It's hard to do. It's hard to say it in a way that's compassionate, but it's important. You gotta, you know, you can't always pick one side of the other. I have one more thing to say about the workers. Um, I have people split negotiables and non-negotiables. Like for me, non-negotiable is that um, keep, keep in smoke. I'm just a smoker. I'm a smoker. Um, and uh, I needed to be spiritual. I needed to uh, be into personal development. And my friends were like, you're never going to find a guy like that. <laughs> but I did. And, uh, and then the, non uh, the negotiables were, you know, how tall he was. And, Right. And you'll find that your non-negotiables are more emotional driven and intimacy and uh, about respect. And then the negotiables are all the superficial stuff that really doesn't matter. Because your guy's going to look at a different package than you expected. <laughs> well, we all get old, so the package is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it looks so much better as they age. <laughs> Um, this goes kind of towards the second topic you were going to discuss, but also possible insecurities. I, I find it hard to balance being hard to get, or just being busy with giving guys enough encouragement to ask you out again if maybe you couldn't make it, or you had something else going on, um, you know, not disclosing, oh, I'm dating these other guys too, but how do you kind of keep their interest and keep them excited to ask you out and, and not too insecure? Good I don't think I'm a great person to ask about this because I went to girls' school for 12 years. <laughs> so I'm still that kind of like that um, Asperger spectrum madness with it. And it's like, well, I totally can't do it. And this isn't about anyone else. But, you know, if you can just ask me again in four days. <laughs> and this, you know, it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. But in terms of sort of those subtler, unspoken signals like there there were no boys anywhere. You wanted a prom date, you had to like go into the fields with your kid helmet on and like stalk it and ask it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still kind of not consciously in that mindset. Fortunately I have a brother who has helped me you know, kind of pull it back a little bit. But um, I'm not a great person to ask about the subtleties because I'm always a fan of just, you know, with compassion and politesse, but just being direct and saying what's going on and cutting through some of that. But um, I'm sure someone else on the panel has said it. more elegant. <laughs> this is what I would say is that if you if a guy asks you out, say for Thursday, and you can't make it, is you tell them, give them another option. I can't do Thursday, but what about, you know, uh, next Monday or Tuesday? Give them a couple of options. I mean, don't say you're open the whole week because you don't want them to think you really don't have a life. <laughs> but you need to give them a couple options to let you know that you're still interested. Because if you just say, no, I can't do it, then he may think you're not interested. Um, but if you open the door and you say, you know, I'm available these other two days and he doesn't bite on it, don't think that, oh, you know, I need to keep up. A guy, if he really wants to go out with you and you open the door, he will ask you out again. Yeah, yeah I would say, you know, the two major things is communication and interest. So, like you just said, you know, if he asks you out and you're not available, you know, you say, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm not available. However, I am free this day and that day. You know, you want to give him a choice so at least he knows that you're not just blowing him off. You know, and if you happen to be busy, you happen to travel, you know, let him know. You know, I think you know, for guys, it's, it needs to, it needs to be, still needs to be specific. You know, so if you say, you know, I'm gone for the week, you know, that's not enough for him. You know, for him, he's saying, okay, well, she's gone for a whole week. I guess she's not interested. You know, but if you say, I'll be gone for the week. However, I'll be free the day I get back or the day after I get back. Then you can check it. You know, it becomes specific. He does. It also doesn't also interest, interested. And then in, in the interim. You know, continue to communicate, you know, and, and find out, like, you know, simple things, like, how's your day going, you know? And as long as he knows that, like, you know, you're interested and actually generally, yeah, generally interested in that, you know, in him, 
He's going to reciprocate. One thing I'd like to add, just don't hold tension in yourself of like hope he falls and, you know, that feeling, because they can feel it. <laughs> and I used to have my clients, they would, it's, I do email coaching with my private clients, and they'll say, you know, I went out with him on Saturday, he gave us a call, I'm freaking out. I said, okay, go inside and just tell yourself how wonderful you are. I swear he'll, he'll email you in two seconds. <laughs> they will email me in two minutes, you just email me. I'm like, of course. <laughs> they can feel it. So you have, you know, I'll talk about this later as well, but you really have that power. And the worst thing you want to do is have that pulling energy or you're, they're going to feel it, and they're going to go reach for the phone, and they're just going to have this psychic message. They're not going to know why, because they're not that complicated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't even you call it. And they're just going to feel that pull. So just let it go, and remember you're the prize. You have a million dollars in your hand first. One other thing I want to actually add, um, because I've been hearing this a lot from my male clients, and I think it's good information for all you women to know, is a lot of my male clients keep saying to me lately is, and I know this is New York, and as women, we're very career driven because it's so expensive to live in New York, and so we spend a lot of time at work, and we don't have a lot of time to go out and do those things. A lot of my male clients are saying to me lately that they're getting tired of women that are so busy with their careers that they're like, oh, I'll squeeze you in here, um, you know, two weeks from now. Um, you know, if you really want to go out with something, you need to make the time. I mean, I know your careers are quite important, but finding a man is probably just as important. I would also, sir, I'm sorry. Okay. I would also say sort of as an adjunct to that, that in New York, there is like, there is a code. And busy at work, I'm really busy with work, is code for, I'm going to let you think, I'm going to call you later, and I'm not going to do it. Um, I've heard this code. I've used this code. This is New York, and I heard, like, recently I was seeing a guy, and I sort of didn't think it was going to go anywhere, and I was right, but, like, our last date, he was sort of like, that, you know, it's just been really crazy at work, and I was like, okay, check. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. That's <laughs> fine. It's polite. Everyone knows what's going on. That's the code. However, if you are, like, legit busy at work, and you just need, like, couple of days to wrap some things up or you've got a trip or whatever, like as he said, use specifics. Be like, really busy at work, doing XYZ, my schedule is gonna clear in two days. I would love to get a celebratory cocktail and we'll give them some, some specifics because I I am sure men here are busy at work and they're like, okay, I'm getting I'm getting broomed out. <laughs> so, they should have used to use that though with New York women. Yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> And that's why lifestyle is so important. I know we really will talk about that a lot. I mean, we don't date you for your careers. And like Suzanne said, like, you're not going to be working forever. I'm dating you because there's a life that you bring that's going to you know, make us feel better about ourselves with you. And so that's why your lifestyle is, is worth spending time and not so much your career. Yes, New York is expensive. Yes, I, I completely understand. We all work really hard. You know, but at the same time, you owe it to yourself to be able to enjoy the life that you guys are living. Yeah. I find that women that are overworking are using that as, they really are for the club, and just using that as a, kind of like, oh, I'm busy at work, maybe next year I'll look forward, I'll find my time. And it's really just your fear of really having that intimacy, so you use, use your work as a way to keep them like, unconscious. Yeah, shopping questions. Yeah. 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 There are games, certain games you have to play, like you mentioned, you don't, don't tell them that they're open all week, well, in the beginning stages of dating, you don't want to see into it. So there are things. I wouldn't mean, don't call me kids. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's a simple, you know, cat and mouse You know, I mean, guys need to, I mean, you need to, I don't know what this word, but you guys need to gauge, you know, how much a man is interested. You know, you just have to. You know, you can just assume that he's fully interested. You, know, you want to know how much he's interested. And us as well, you know, we want to know how interested you are in us, you know, and it's just part of that, you know, just small beginning stages of just gauging interest what and really creating anticipation. What was that? What are the signs you're looking on the first date to see whether or not it's interesting? Is it all about body language? Um, you know, a lot of it is definitely body language, you know, him just kind of opening up um, just physically, uh, smile, intense eye contact. But also through conversation, you know, wanting to know specific things about your life beyond just what you do. It's more about who you are. And also referring things, referring to things in the future. You know, talking about, oh, I'd love to, you know, take you to this place, or I'd love to, uh, you know, where are you, you know, where are your plans for later on, or I'd love to take you on a second date. I mean, 
you know, when he's starting to include you into things that are going on in his life, that's usually typically a good sign. You know, but once again, it's one of those things where you do take his face value and you make sure that he follows up with action. You know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I've had people tell me that they were going to date with a guy the first date and he was like planning a trip next year to, to uh, Spain and you want to go with me and he probably says that to every girl on the first date to like brag about his money. So you have to kind of be, be, be conscious of <laughs> what they promise and, and, and yeah. that don't see if they're BSing or not and, and just really genuinely interested. Yeah. And you can kind of smell it. So once you've established that he's interested, is it is it being too forward to say, well, what are you doing tomorrow? You should at least wait. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you have the million dollars. But if you don't want to be done, you know, if that's your personality and you're pretty direct and then you have to kind of put yeah, the bushel over that light, you have to be a sort of gauge, like, do I want to tone this down a little bit and widen my field of possibilities? Do I want to just be completely, you know, me, sugar free, and they can, they can take it or leave it? You know, it's a, it's a choice, and you see, you know, fine tune it and see what works. But if that, if you really feel like you're not being genuine by not asking, or not putting it out there, then that's, that's your call. You gotta trust your gut. All right. Well, give our panelists a round of applause.